What's up everyone, I'm Don Ferguson, and on this episode of Something New here in the Teak Light Basement Bar, we're about to have some fun. We're going back to Cantera Negra, but this time we're trying their Añejo and Extra Añejo. I'm ready to taste, I'm thirsty. Roll the tape. Before we crack these bad boys open, I'm, it's like I'm double fisting here, but we're going to talk a little bit more about Cantera Negra. It's now 1554. These are both twice distilled, 80 proof, and Cantera Negra tequila came out around 2017. Now, the Añejo, it is aged between 30 and 36 months. The extra Añejo, EA as I like to call it, a minimum of 48 months. The repa... Shit, the reposado, I drank it all. Shit. We need more! Let's talk agave. Now, their agave is grown in volcanic soil, and they're harvested at around seven to eight years of maturity. The barrels that they use to rest their tequila, this is where it gets really funky. They make their own barrels. I don't know, like, many brands that do that. Either they get bourbon barrels, whiskey barrels, wine barrels, whatever barrels, but they make their own and then they char them to the depth and character that they want. So before bottling Cantera Negra, they do a taste test and it is a family taste test, but not the families of the owners. It's the family of the distiller. Don Alberto has been a distiller in the tequila making industry in the business for over 40 years. So when we talked a little bit about the aging process, 30 to 36 months, minimum of 48, what they do is they taste it to make sure that it's up to quality standards and taste standards. So that way it all tastes the same. So it can vary. It can be 30 months and it attains that, that depth of character, or it can be 36 months. Finally, the history about this brand is just absolutely amazing. The owner, Lance Gildner, discovered this at a bar. It was in a barrel, and they were drinking it. They loved it, but it was a secret. Nobody would tell them what the name of it was, what distillery, who the distiller's name was. He had to do the research to track it down, and it took a roughly nine years for that to be accomplished. What we created here is history and that's what we're about to taste oh let's get to tasting i got my glasses and what is better than one tequila two tequilas and that's what we're going to do here now i am actually going to crack open this extra añejo already into my glen cairn glass and people at home, oh, wow you can smell that i want to let it breathe you know i want it to come to life and just just breathe and just exude all of these beautiful fumes so that way when we drink it and try it and taste it we can get a lot of those flavors now this is from what i've been reading very much like a a great sipping tequila from what i've been reading but it's also like a whiskey or a bourbon so you want it to breathe you want it to come to life like it's a zombie on the walking dead the añejo you kind of want to do it the same way but with that being said i want to get this to its full ripeness because it's very rare that we get an actual extra añejo and yes as you can see true to form my pores are on point that's what we do here so bottles we talked about them in the first episode so if you haven't uh, watched that first episode please go back we'll flash it at the end but I'm anxious I want to taste like it's my first time taking a drink and I just turned 21 Look at that color. Throw that in there. It's like a golden straw. It's a beautiful character. You see some slow legs just kind of moving over and just coming down the glass, which is just really fantastic. Ooh, they're beautiful. You know, it's not a super slow, so they're coming down and I'm not picking up any alcohol. So the alcohol vapors, I really try to judge that because I just don't like something that's so intense that too much alcohol makes your eyes burn. But while I'm picking up some oak, um, 
I am picking up some caramel, some agave, some actually sweet cooked agave, slightly charred, little hint of alcohol on the nose, but nothing, nothing crazy. Uh, I would say a tad of vanilla, a tad of spice, maybe like a clove. Interesting. The Reposado was fantastic, and yeah, I drank it all. You know, these, these are the things that happen. Oh boy, that's good. That's really good. You get the nice, sweet, cooked agave, almost like a caramelization. So I'm picking up some caramel, some char, some sweetness. It's got a medium spice. It's very light, so it's very clean, um, crisp. This is not heavy whatsoever, not overly sweet whatsoever at all. This is a fantastic sipper. It's not chilled. We are serving it neat. Oh, we're going to become best friends. We're going to get to know each other. Man, I, I need to slow down because we have another one. But as you can see, I'm getting carried away. Quinteta Negra is absolutely a fast-growing brand. Uh, they're getting a ton of attention. They're winning awards. San Francisco World Spirits Competition. They're getting really well known. Yeah, this is not thick, it's not heavy, it is not overly spicy, it's extremely smooth. Fantastic. So, the Blanco, the Repo, and now the Añejo. I'm feeling it. I'm really feeling it. But we got another one, and Jesus, I need to slow down. Seriously. All right. I cleansed my palate with some water and through the magic of TV, because you're watching me on TV, it's been about 10 to 15 minutes, so we've been letting this breathe. It's just been exhaling and I'm, I'm ready. Are you guys ready? I'm totally ready. Look at that. It's like a brilliant light copper penny, uh, golden straw, beautiful color. The legs are just slowly, elegantly dripping down. It's got those tears. Ah, they're running. Really nice. Very, very nice. Now, this is a minimum of 48 months that's aged in oak barrels. And they char them. They make them themselves. So, we're picking up not much alcohol. Not much at all as far as the alcohol vapors more of the oak char a little bit of caramel a little bit of the agave uh depending on how it's charred it's going to overtake some of the the nose aroma profile somewhat of vanilla and hmm, maybe like a smokiness and possibly dried fruit cheers my friends boy oh man dried fruit is right because honestly i'm picking up like a dried cherry a nuttiness something like that it's kind of a little bit creamy you're getting some charred agave off of it that tartness um and it's not overly tart so so don't get scared at home enjoy along with you know play a game it's like a drinking game drink along with me and see what you get shout it out i can't hear you though Boy, that's, that is fucking stellar. I mean, that is just stellar. That is so smooth. It's like a banana peel on ice. That's how smooth this is. Good Lord. This is definitely like a, a, a fine cognac, a bourbon-like sipper. You're getting some caramel in it, a little bit of vanilla. Ah, that that dried fruit sweetness and tartness on the back end that's so subtle is just it's just outrageous this is by far one of the best EAs that I've had the pleasure to try especially on this platform which we haven't tried many but the Glen Cairn even nosing it you just don't get those alcohol vapors rising up and slapping you in your eyeballs 
this is just extremely smooth, very delightful. If you're looking for, excuse me, I can't interrupt my drinking. If you're looking for a really good sipping tequila, especially an extra añejo, and you want to impress your friends and say, you're not up on this, this is the one to get up on. Glasses still have some tequila in it. I did a double pour, so we're going to sip these off camera, but that wraps up another episode of something new here in the Teak Life Basement Bar, Cantera Negra, their Añejo, and Extra Añejo. Bam, Teak Life approved, 100%. This is one of my favorite brands out on the market right now. So if you haven't tried them yet, the hell are you waiting for? Stellar. Follow us on social media, subscribe to the Teak Life YouTube channel, turn the notification bell on, and if there's anything that you think we should try, comment or send us an email. I do reply, trust me, or somebody else will reply. I don't know. I'm just going to drink, but stay tuned for the Teak Life truth, because we're talking about, does tequila go bad? Does it go bad? Oh, thanks for watching all the way to the end. I know most people just don't do it, but be unique, be different. We just tried a double dose of tequila. And one of the biggest questions is, does tequila go bad? It's from agave, from a plant, so does it go bad? Here's the in-depth on that. Once you open a bottle, especially some of these expensive ones, you typically want to drink it within one year. But it, that doesn't necessarily mean that it goes bad. So what does happen? Now what you want to do to preserve your tequila is don't let the oxygen in. You want to keep a very, very tight seal on your bottle so that way the oxygen just doesn't seep in. What happens is the oxidation process, it can actually change the taste. And you can test this at home. So if you leave this out for about 24 to 48 hours and then go back and taste this compared to this, then you can see what I'm talking about. It can change the dynamic, the complexity, the character, the, the profile. It can change a lot to where they taste different. So over time, if your bottles, if you open them, aren't sealed properly, there can be some problems and it just doesn't taste the same as the first day that you tried it. Now here's a bonus tidbit. These clay ceramic bottles, if they're not fired and baked properly, over time what can happen is it will actually, the tequila will be absorbed by the unbaked clay. So there's been many times where people have bought a bottle and they got it home and it's only half filled, thinking, damn, did I get ripped off? It's like a drug deal. No, you didn't get ripped off. What happened is they didn't properly bake the bottles so therefore the tequila was absorbed and you got some problems there's some issues that's a little teak life truth life's too short to drink bad liquor choose better my friends see you next episode